Hi Scorpio! Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for January of 2020. I'm Jamie Kiel Miller here in Berkeley, California, and with me is... Hey guys, it's uh, Julia Mijas joining in from San Francisco. And we have got stuff to tell you about this month, Scorpio. It begins with a big emphasis in your third house of communication. Lots of stuff going on there, and some of this stuff is long-term, so that's going to go on being a theme for quite a while. But over the course of the month, there's going to be this migration of planets over into your fourth house, which brings the emphasis and the theme to home and family, domestic life, heritage, and roots. And here to say more about these planetary movements, Julia, um, what are your thoughts about Mars and Venus and Mercury this month? Well, Scorpio, I'll start with Mars. So the planet Mars is going to be in your second house of money and possessions for most of the month because it moves in there on January 3rd. So what that means is you may be feeling a little extra competitive about your earnings and salary because mm -hmm. Mars can have a competitive edge to it. Um, and you also may be feeling driven to increase your personal income somehow, such as maybe expanding your business or strategizing how to get that raise. And then the next planet I want to talk about is Venus, planet of art, beauty, and relationships. And she begins this month in your fourth house of family and home. So this is a very warm and cozy time for you, Scorpio, because you might be feeling more pleasure at home than usual. And this may also mean spending more time with family or maybe decorating or beautifying your home in some way and then Venus moves into your fifth house on January 13th where she really really loves to be so this is a really great time to date if you're single or if you're attached to someone to go out on the town with your partner now the next planet I want to talk about is Mercury and Mercury begins this month in your third house of communication where it's very very strong so you could be expressing yourself through your words or through your speech much more effectively than usual um, it's also a great time to learn something new like a new computer program or a new language mm -hmm. then when Mercury moves into your fourth house on January 16th your mind may be turned to more personal matters because it's the house of family and home so you might be thinking about making those things a lot more satisfying in some way. Then um, the last one that I want to talk about is the sun. And the sun begins the month in your third house of communication. So that means that you might be identifying more with how you come across in your words to others. And it may be a very nice time to spend a little bit of time with your siblings too, because that's another thing that the third house represents. And then when the sun moves into your fourth house on January 20th, uh, again, that's the house of family home, you may be feeling a little bit more patriotic than usual as you're identifying more with your roots or country and your focus might be turned a little bit more towards your family's needs as well mm. what else do you have to add Jamie mm. <clears throat> well January 10th is a super interesting day with a lot of stuff in it <clears throat> so one of those things is greater epiphany day and greater epiphany day is the day when mercury having gone direct from retrograde some time ago, cruising along catches up with the sun and they meet in a burst of insight. So um, there tends to be a lot of mental clarity and a lot of forward movement and momentum for projects. And uh, it's a great time to, um, to begin you know, new projects with, uh, I'd say, a reasonable expectation of their success. So, um, and especially if those are writing projects, because Mercury loves that stuff, and that's happening here in your third house. So that's pretty cool. Now, uh, also happening on the 10th, we have Uranus, which has been retrograde, thus the little red S that's here, showing that Uranus is stationing, and it turns black, and then it disappears, because at this point, a couple of days later, Uranus is moving direct. Now, Uranus is the crazy genius in all of us, and when Uranus is retrograde, we tend to experience some frustration and some disruption in life, but when Uranus goes direct, it's like the genius is let out of uh, the bottle. Genie, genius, those words are related. And, um, and we can feel uh, a greater sense of liberation 
and uh, more of a tendency to think outside the box. So that's happening on the 10th also, and that's a great combination of factors. <clears throat> now, uh, the third thing that's happening on the 10th is a lunar eclipse and full moon. Now, a lunar eclipse always happens on a full moon, and in this particular case, we have the sun in Capricorn hanging out with Mercury, and uh, the moon over here in Cancer. And the moon is what's being eclipsed, and if you want to understand eclipses, and this one in particular, you can check out our news video <clears throat> in the January news playlist that will uh, tell you a lot more about this eclipse. But for now, what I want to tell you is that there's a big battle going on between the Capricorn side, which has many more planets pulling for it, and the Cancer side, which is pretty much just the lonely little moon pulling for that. The Capricorn side is, is saying, you know, um, be tough, be strong. Uh, be vigilant, be, um, you know, sacrifice what you need to, um, make the goal, you know. Um, so Capricorn is, is pretty harsh, but Cancer is much more gentle. And so this moon is saying, you know, don't forget to live a balanced life. Don't forget that you have a home life. Don't forget that you have feelings. Don't forget that you have intuition and conscience and all of those things that are really important and valuable, but not measurable. So um, that eclipse um, is going to be coming down in your ninth and third houses. And so I think some of how it's going to affect you is in your everyday thoughts, their content and their form, and also the, you know, the big picture of life. And that basically the moon is going to remind you during this eclipse that <clears throat> feelings must be considered in the big picture of life. And that the everyday details and getting them right and getting them correct is not necessarily as important sometimes as, um, as you know, spreading love in the world, frankly. <laughs> so then later on in the month, we have got a full moon, a new moon in Aquarius, and that's happening in your fourth house. And here comes that moon cycling around. And boom, there it falls in four degrees in your fourth house in Aquarius. And this just kind of puts a, a, an underscore or a capper on that whole idea of the, the migration of planets from Capricorn into Aquarius, from your third house into your fourth house, and just really brings the emphasis to home life and the importance of home life and, and how you really like to have your home be unique and quirky and different and all of your own, Scorpio. So um, this is a great time for planting seeds of new beginnings. That's what um, new moons are all about. And so this is a great month in which to plant some seeds that will lead to you having exactly the right kind of home life and feathering your nest in a really good way. Because you know what? You deserve comfort. So I think that's all we have for you today. If you were thinking about a reading, I would recommend something um, either along the lines of a good old needle in transit reading because there's never a bad time for that, checking in with what the planets are doing in your future. But also because of this emphasis on the fourth house and the way these planets are going to move into the fifth house of children, uh, a family soul group reading or a star child reading might also be a really good fit for you this month. And um, yeah, that's it. I hope that you're enjoying these horoscopes that we have so much fun making for you. You can always find them at pandoraastrology.com slash horoscope or in, uh, on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology, organized into a playlist for your viewing pleasure. And we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.